So check this. You can quickly enable voice dictation by just pressing down the space bar. Oh, actually, I don't even have to hold down on the screen to use it, but this is an example. Let's get into it. What is going on, y'all? Tech me out here, and it has been a little minute <laughs> since we have done a tips and tricks video. So in front of me today, I have the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, and I feel like this was like just the perfect time to get back into the groove of things. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a few things that you might wanna change when you first get your Galaxy Z Fold 3, as well as some cool things that you may or may not know that you can do with it. And it's a ticket talking miser for the biggest, that's a comma and a All right, so for the option to enable voice dictation, using the spacebar key on your keyboard. So first thing you're gonna do is pull up your keyboard, and then we're gonna tap this little settings icon right here, and we're gonna navigate down to swipe, touch, and feedback. And once we're in here, we're gonna go to touch and hold spacebar, and we're gonna change it to voice input, because by default, I think it might be cursor control, I think, or either no action. But then after you do that and you head to your keyboard again, you'll be able to long press the spacebar key, it will start to listen, to dictate. You don't have to hold it down, just tap to pause it, and then tap again to talk. And um, it does a fairly good job, I'd say, in translating my voice to text, period. Poo. <laughs> now, something that I do wanna mention within the keyboard settings that I found pretty useful is the option to adjust the size and the location of the keyboard, especially when you're using that front cover keyboard because it's really compact. So the keyboard settings that I see here right now are just for when the display's open like this. So if I come in here and I go to size and transparency, it will let me readjust the keyboard so that I can make this wider or shorter, but I kind of like the wider setup just so that it feels closer together but still separate. And then you can also make it taller, but I don't want to, so I'm gonna just hit done here. And if you're not a fan of this split keyboard setup, you can change it so that it is one keyboard in itself like we're used to by tapping this icon right here, or you could tap this one to make it smaller and more like a floating one. So this feature here, is a new one and it's known as Labs. So for the Fold, not every app currently can take advantage of the entire beautiful big display, but you can force it to. And that's by going into your settings and going to the Labs section. So I'm gonna just search for it. It's under Advanced Features and we're gonna tap Labs. And within here is where you can change a few things. So for example, Instagram is not full screen up here. Like it doesn't take advantage of the entire display, but you can force it to do so by going into the customized app aspect ratios, find the app that you wanna force into full screen mode. So as you can see, Instagram is already full screen. So when I come in here and I open Instagram, you got this big, beautiful, oh my gosh, this just looks so good to be able to look at Instagram on this. I like it. The other thing that you can do with Labs is have it auto-rotate certain applications. Again, Instagram, normally when you rotate the phone, it does not rotate the app. So you can make it do so by coming in here and choosing it. So now when you're in Instagram and you rotate your phone, boom, it also rotates the app. The other thing you can adjust is the flex mode panels. So flex mode basically has one app appear on the top of the screen and a panel on the bottom with like extra controls that are customized per application. So different options for different apps. But normally an app like Chrome does not have any flex mode options, but you can force it to do so within here. So you can go to flex mode panel, find Google Chrome, turn that option on. And then when you hop into Chrome, and you put your phone into flex mode, which is like this. We now have some options on the bottom. So you pull up the notification center, take a screenshot real quick, adjust the brightness and the sound. The other thing to pay attention to that you can do with Labs is pin your favorite applications. So I don't know if this is still called the edge drawer or not, but basically the edge drawer, you can swipe in from the right and have your favorite applications over here, but they took it a step further with the Fold 3 where you can tap on these three lines and select pin. And now it stays stagnant on the right hand side, very much like a Windows desktop experience. Because then when you're in that multitasking workflow, you got your apps open and you have another app that you need just quick access to, you can make things be even more flexible. And then when you no longer need this, you can just tap that pin and it gets rid of it. Always handy to have that, you know, one tap action life where you don't have to navigate to too many different areas within the phone to get what you need. But his next tip is about creating app pairs. So for me, I know personally, I tend to look on YouTube and take notes about different things in which I'm trying to learn. So it's nice to be able to just swipe in from the right, 
tap on this here and it instantly opens up YouTube and my note taking application, which is Notion. So I can just swipe up from the bottom and get rid of it when I'm done. But when I need it, it's right there. I don't have to always make it because ordinarily you do have to access your multi-tax switcher and then long press on an application and tell it to open a split screen view. You know, if you know you're gonna be using two apps a lot, I'd highly suggest creating an app pair. The way you go about doing that is to pull up your multitask switcher, long press on one application, choose open and split screen view, and then open the second application on the right hand side. And then after you've done that, you're gonna tap on the three dots in the middle, and then you're gonna choose the icon to the far right with the square and a plus symbol, and that's gonna instantly add the two applications that you have as a pair that you can easily access from your favorite app list. But you're not limited to creating an app pair that only has two apps. You can even do it for three apps that you commonly use so that those three apps are readily accessible. And you can resize the windows as needed in case you need one bigger than the other. Basically, those three dots in the center are gonna allow you to kind of finer tune things. You can also use that area to have the apps rotate their position on screen. Google Now or Free TV. You can easily access it by swiping right on your home screen if you're using the Samsung Launcher. You can choose between the two by just long pressing on your home screen and then swiping to the right and choosing if you want it to be the Google Discover page or the Samsung Free page. Or if you don't want it to be either of those, you can just turn it off altogether so that when you swipe, nothing happens. But I personally like using either of these. But right now I have it on Samsung Free TV because I just think it's so cool that you can just swipe in from the right and instantly start watching TV. And you have all these different categories at the top. You can even customize those by either tapping the pin to the far right of them or the three dots up here and choosing settings. And this is gonna let you manage your channels so that if there's a certain channel that you're noticing, let me get that out of the way, a certain channel that you're noticing that you're not ever using, you just kinda wanna clean up your view, you can toggle it off right Right in here and you probably noticed there that the video did keep playing even though I navigated away from it I did that by enabling the pop-up player so that anytime that I'm watching something and you know I just go back to my home screen for example or just anywhere away from that it'll still play but if you don't want the pop-up player always on and want to enable it when you need it then you can just tap that little icon right there and that'll pull up the pop-up players so that when you navigate away, it's visible. But the nice thing with Samsung TV is that it's not just limited to free TV. You can even listen to podcasts or you can tap on read down here at the bottom and you know, get, and get caught up on the news. Or you can go to the play option here and instantly play games. As soon as you tap it, it'll launch it. Now, one thing I'm really enjoying up here is the drag and drop option. I believe that's new as well. And the way that you can do that is to just simply open up two apps side by side and highlight the text you want and then drag it over into the area in which you want it to be. Now the thing to note here is that this doesn't work with every app, but it thankfully does work with the entire Microsoft Office suite. Now, especially for those of you that are new to Galaxy devices or even Fold devices, you're gonna wanna know how to customize your home screen. And it's accessed just as normal, a long press here on the home screen. And then we're gonna navigate the settings. Now, although a lot of the options are still the same that you normally see on a Samsung phone, you do have some new ones here like cover screen mirroring, mirroring, which is basically gonna have it set so that whatever layout you have on your front cover will also be transferred over to your inside cover displays. I originally thought it was just gonna be a bigger view, like this would just be spread out, but no, it doesn't work like that. So basically how it works is page one, two, and three on the inside transfers over to look like this. So this is page one, this is page two, and this is page three. I'm not really a fan of that. I really wish that, you know, this first page took up both displays and then the second page would take up both displays. But any changes that are applied to the cover display would also reflect on the inner display. But the cool thing is if you did want to try it out, you can, and then if you turn it off, it'll just revert back to your layout that you had originally. Also something to note is that you do have your own separate lock screen and home screen wallpapers for the inner displays versus what you would see on the outer displays. So when you wanna customize those inner displays, you're gonna long press on the home screen and then head over to wallpapers and then choose what you wanna see on your home and lock screen. And that will apply for this only. Then to customize the cover screen, you're gonna close the phone and we're gonna long press on the home screen here and then same thing, navigate to wallpapers and then choose the two wallpapers that we want here. 
which yeah, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk more about, you know, my thoughts of the Fold. This is my first time using a Fold device. So it's definitely been an experience here for me because this is not your traditional phone, but I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. If you're interested in hearing my first impressions of this device or just checking out more content from me in general, you can feel free to hit that subscribe button down below and the like button if you feel inclined to. But going back to these settings that you have for your home screen, another one that's gonna be good to take advantage of is hiding apps. So when you tap that, you can come in here and hide apps so that they don't appear in your app drawer, which is gonna be really good for, especially those bloatware apps that you can't uninstall. A lot of them you can, but in the event there's just one or maybe an app that you're not using like that that you don't wanna see but don't wanna delete, you can come in here and just tap on it and then hit done. So now when you go into the app drawer, that application is not gonna come up at all. Not even if you search for it. And for your notification badges, if you're the type that would rather see a circle for new notifications versus a number, you can come in here and choose app icon badges and tap on it and then choose if you want it to be a number or a dot. And you can take it a step further with this so that when you do have a notification, if you tap and hold on it, it will then show you the notifications for that app. So this is how it looks when you don't have that option on to see the notifications. But if you do enable that option, this is what it will look like. All right, let's talk about customizing your lock screen. So the way to access that is to go into your settings and we're gonna go down to lock screen. And the one I wanna focus on first is your security that you have set for it. So I personally like using the pattern in my face. And if you notice there, it didn't even show you the line of it tracing my finger. And the way that you can make that happen is to go into secure lock settings. And then once you're in there, you're gonna turn off the option, make pattern visible, so that it doesn't show the little line following your finger that it normally would. You can also come in here and take advantage of like smart lock so that you can choose amongst a few options for your phone to stay unlocked when one of these things are happening, such as it knowing that it's currently with you or on you, your phone will stay unlocked so you don't have to always unlock it. All right, now let's go back a little bit to this app switcher here. So when you pop in there, you'll notice that it has some apps at the bottom and which is recommended for you to check out. I don't really mind it, but if you wanna turn it off, you can go up here to the top where these three dots are, tap on them, choose settings, and then turn off show recommended apps. And then you'll have this clean, beautiful view. So something new with the Fold is that it now works with an S Pen. The one that I have is the Fold Edition. This is basically like a really nice stylus. <laughs> uh, you still have the button to activate air command gestures and things like that, but you don't have to charge this up and it doesn't have Bluetooth. So it instantly starts working as soon as I have it interact with the phone here. But the thing that I like with the S Pen are the options that come with it, such as creating a note, you can view your note, or you can do things like screen write, which will take a screenshot and let you write on it. That's gonna be great for sharing photos or just drawing attention to a certain area on the screen, like if it's an outfit for example, that I'm looking at. I like using this so that I can better indicate what I'm trying to show. You also have the option for live messages. This might be kind of cool to use on something like Instagram because it'll let you take a picture and then, you know, scribble a message and then play it back. So it's kind of like animated text. Now you can customize which you know options you have within here. So the way that you can access that is to head into your settings here. And then we're gonna go to shortcuts. And you have two sections. This section are your S Pen features. And the bottom section here are apps in which you can actually put over here. So, which is great, especially for apps that are best utilized with the S Pen. So I know some of the cool features with the S Pen that I liked were like the glance option where you can be inside of an application, pull up your air commands there, tap on glance, and then it'll keep a thumbnail of the app at the bottom of your screen so that you can hover over the thumbnail there and get a quick peek at the application, which is handy, especially when you're like referring back and forth between two different things and you kind of want a full screen mode for both of them. The other thing that I liked with the S Pen is the pinup option, which is great for drawing. And the cool thing with pinup too is not only can you draw, but you can also come in here and color. You can attend a live drawing class or even take part in challenges and things like that. Now, if you're more so looking for controls for the camera or an S Pen that works amongst the host of your Galaxy devices, I would look at the S Pen Pro, which is the big brother to this one. But there are so many other things that I wanna show y'all, but I feel like this video might be long enough. So I'm gonna save that for part two. If, of course, you're interested in seeing it, let me know down below in the comment section so I know to get on that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm 
so much I want to talk about y'all about this phone, but I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. But just know we definitely have a conversation coming. But if you're interested in picking up the Fold 3 for yourself or the Flip 3, I'm going to put a link down below where you can pre-order it because the day is the last day to do so, which I highly advise to go ahead and pre-order because you do get a $200 credit, which is enough to get you either of the S pens and a nice case. And if you're the type that would rather give this phone a trial run, they actually have an option for that as well, where you can try it out for a few days before it charges your car. And if you then opt to keep it, it'll charge you either the full amount or you can pay in installments. So there's a lot of different ways in which you can get your hands on this phone, y'all. So definitely check out the description box below. That's gonna be it for this one. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.